My name is Diana Fearon. I am part of The Melody Men, which is a all-girl writing and production team. We write, we produce, we sing. We've had successes with various artists, a lot of them dance artists, and a lot of our songs have been placed in adverts, such as Colgate, Boots, Vodafone, uh, Stella McCartney. Um, yeah, just all-round music fan. Gonna dance, gonna shake, gonna hit you like an earthquake. Gonna dance, gonna shake, gonna hit you like an earthquake, like an earthquake. Shake, move with it, move with it, move. What was the process sort of early on in terms of you falling in love with music? Well, I was from a musical background, like my family, all of my family were in music. All of my, you know, even now, all my cousins practically sing or in some type of form of entertainment. My dad was quite musical and he was from a musical, uh, his, his brother's quite musical, his brother's quite famous in the 80s. Okay. Um, Philip Fearon and he had quite a lot of popular chart hits back in the day. And then he went to form or help form the group Baby D. Yeah, it was just always easy to fall into it because it was always around me. And my dad would always play stuff like my dad. It's his birthday today, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah, he passed away a couple of years ago, so it's quite significant that I'm here talking about music because it's oh. something he would love. So, um, yeah, 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 no, it's, it's, yeah, he still, still try to live through in music, I guess, mm, mm. through him. Um, and yeah, he got me on the path. So yeah, from young, from, from when I was born. Um, you're also a mum. Yes, I have a seven year old son. Oh, sweet. He keeps me in check. Fair <laughs> enough, I respect that, I respect that. <laughs> is he, is he a gamer, musician? Or um, he or? wants to be. Um, in music as well, actually, I think oh, he's seen me. So, but he that. wants to be a DJ. That's fine, as long as it's not Fortnite or Warzone or anything. No, like that, I try to keep him away from that. Nice. I don't know how long that's going to last because he does like video games. Him and his dad play a lot of video games together. Mm. But um, yeah, so he keeps me grounded. In terms of like your musical journey, because um, you took it on as a passion mm. early on, and you've been around music sort of your whole life. Yeah. Um, how does, how do you sort of balance the two? Well, I've got loads of help. Mm. Um, my family were very, very close. So nice. whenever I need a babysitter, <laughs> 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 that's, yeah, they're great. They, they've been so supportive. And because yeah. they know that I've been on this journey for so long, yeah. you know, it's, it, it, they get it. I don't have to explain it. I mean, it's funny because in the beginning, my mum was like, music, really? Go to uni and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And I actually dropped out of uni oh, to okay. carry on with them because I was like, well, I want to study music, but I'm signed. So this is what I would have studied to yeah, become. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. what's the point? So um, once I got that break, because I, um, I was like, well, yeah, just makes sense to just keep going. And I haven't looked back. How did it feel when you were first beginning to create music? Because obviously you've spoken about obviously being able to sing. Yeah. And then also learning to produce and stuff. Um, how did it feel, for example, hearing your like song for the first one in an advert or hearing your single out for the first time? Um, it felt great and it was nice to show others because mm. the thing with music is you can be in the background for so long mm. and no one really knows what you do. Mm. It's like, how's the music going? How's the <laughs> thing going? Yeah. But it was good for someone, for them to actually see it yeah. in everyday products like yeah. the Boots, the Colgate, the Vodafone. Yeah they can actually see that what I'm doing isn't just a hobby. A hobby. Mm -hmm. It's actually be able to provide some, sus some sustenance and something yeah, that yeah, they can yeah. understand because yeah, a lot of people like don't that. really understand it. They just, yeah. they have to see it to get it. Yeah, so it was, it was good from that point that I was able to show people what I've been able to do mm. and it made sense. So yeah, and obviously proud, super proud of what mm. we achieved and not giving up. Yeah, because it was so easy, especially after I had my son, mm. to just be like, well, I'm just going to be a mum now, and that was a thing of the past, and now I'm just going to, you know, stay in mum mode. Mm. So now I can show him that you should follow his dreams and pursue that and help him and understand that, because it's 
I think my parents had me quite young. And a lot of parents anyway, they, they just, they see certain careers as being very stable yes. and steady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the creative arts to be something that's quite, you know, up and down, not very consistent. You can't yeah. make a living from it. Yeah. So the fact that I'm, my dad understood that from a very young age and he was able to support me in that. So for me to be able to do the same and also under, let him understand that, yes, you can have other jobs as well, because I'm also a landlady, so I run oh, properties sweet. as well. That's nice. So, but it's all about working for yourself. Yeah, of course. And doing what, you know, having my own time to, to be a mum, to be a musician, to be a landlady. Do you know what I mean? So it's not always just have to put in things in one box. We live in a, a, a society now where you can have more than one yeah. money stream. Yeah. But music will always be my life. I, would, I was doing it for free. Mm. So I'll always do music. From a music standpoint, you never hear about how people get their music to be produced for adverts and stuff. You always hear about it for singles right. and Spotify. Mm. What's the process in terms, in terms of getting your music to be used in, in an advert? Well, it's, it was actually quite organic because we did the song for an artist called Mason. And it was through his production, his label and manager that they put it forward for, the, I think at the time it was Boots. And then uh, they put it again forward for another advert for Colgate and they took it. So it was, and then Vodafone took it. So it just it transpired, I think, from his, more from his side. But it was just a song. We didn't put it forward for a just for an advert. It was an actual song that they used. So it just happened organically no, that way. That, right? Is that how it usually works in that regard? <coughs> it's very organic. Not, not, not always, because there are companies that uh, look for sync music. Mm. And so we do that too. Um, we do sync music for a company called JW Media. Sync music? Mm. For adverts. Okay, like, yeah. uh, like background tracks? Yeah, back uh, or for yeah backing tracks for like a TV series oh, okay. or you know like music is so you know used in film and it's, it works so well like when the scenes coming in so we we you can do bespoke music so if um, an advert a, a brand did come to us or a film and we're like we need this for this specific scene and they'll tell you we need want it to be orchestral we want it to be you know quite dancey then we can make a bespoke. Uh, track for them but a lot of the time with our music they've just heard the track and they've approached our manager or the label has approached them and yeah they've just taken it so we've been quite successful quite fortunate for that in like doing music for like adverts and stuff when it comes to like the process of doing that you said a lot of the time people will come and then like hear a track and be like we want that so yeah. what's the creative process when it comes to like making that type of music there's actually music agencies mm -hmm. okay. and they'll, you can approach them or they approach you if they heard your stuff mm -hmm. and they'll give you a brief. And in that brief, there will be the type of tracks that they want, mm -hmm. the length of tracks, the type of feel, it's something called metadata, which is where mm -hmm. they want, yeah. they give you the, uh, I guess it's like a description of what they want. So it would be yeah. happy, upbeat, fast, and that's the brief you're given, and that's the, the, the tracks that you would deliver. And that's bespoke, because it's delivering exactly what they wanted, right. the style, the way, the format that they'd like. Mm -hmm. oh, well. So that's something that we would do as well. But then there's the artist side, where we've already got the tracks out. A music supervisor has heard that and said, can we use that for our advert? Can we use that for our film? Can we use that for a TV show? Yeah, because that metadata thing works in different ways for industries. I know for advertising, you use it in terms of getting weather and like t how to target certain people. Yeah. So in music, I, I guess it kind of works in a similar way in terms of mood and stuff like that, what you're looking for. Yeah. I mean, we've been quite successful in the dance scene. Mm -hmm. So shows like Jersey Shore, uh, yeah, The By Life yeah, yeah, yeah. have been quite, because that's kind of like, you know, that kind of party yeah. Ibiza. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, vibe so we've got a lot of sync in that way for our music but then there's the bespoke side as well as I said that we can produce as well yeah because I heard I think there was one of the songs where I I felt I thought I'd heard it in Good Luck Charlie which I think is Idris Alba's 
So uh, one of the show, one of the songs, I think it's um. Oh really? Yeah. We actually did submit something for that. So yeah, so I, I, that I heard it. Yeah, yeah, like it's in good. It's in the because obviously Idris is meant to be a DJ. Yeah. In the, oh, in the I didn't even know that. Yeah, no. one of the tracks that's in there. So I I kind of heard it. Cool. I was listening to the playlist. I was like, oh, I remember this. So, oh yeah. wow! Oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's a surprise yeah, for me. Wow. Yeah, because okay. we have submitted. Well, for a couple of artists, we always submit yeah. stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And Idris is been one of them yeah. so oh okay i'll have to talk to our manager about that even though it's on there yeah nah that's sweet so in terms of the like the for the melody men what how was that sort of created that was an organic process because i've been in this music for what for a while and the other girls have been in the music for a while as well so i just hooked up a writing session with uh, one of the girls and we were working together and she's like well I'm writing with this other girl and um they were calling themselves the melody men at the time I was like oh my gosh that's really cool because she's like yeah we just you know we're just melody people we just write melodies because we're just top lining we don't want to be artists we just want to be in the background producing and writing music Mm -hmm. which is why sometimes we rap sometimes we sing because we're not precious about it being a certain way because it's It's not attached to an image or anything yeah it's whatever the brief once because if we get a cut say from you know i'm putting this into existence calvin harris um um who has actually got one of our tracks on his playlist on spotify oh, so sweet. we're getting that's there cool. slowly that's cool that's <laughs> that's that's but um yeah he's if we have if he said look i want to write with you girls or would you guys top line for me then we do it in his style mm-hmm. do you know what I mean? and all you know meet in the middle somewhere so we're not really precious about us being artists. But anyway, we kind of met organically. We, we was writing together, producing together, and it just, it just, we just stuck. It just was like, well, you know, we should just continue this. And that was in 2016. Oh, wow. So it hasn't even been that long, and we've just been, yeah, it's only 2016 since we've been together. Why are you doing music pro? Yeah, as I was saying, like, we were doing our own thing. So I was writing, producing for other artists and just kind of um, for a while. So I've had stuff out, but working in a team, because we all produce, we all write, we do edits as well, oh. our own vocal editing. So it's just so much quicker working in a team. Do you have a home studio? I have, I have two studios. I have one in my home, yes. Yeah. And then we have our main studio in Acton. Interesting. Which one do you prefer working out of? They both have their benefits. I mean, I do like the serenity of being in the acting studio. There's no, there's no home life. <laughs> so I don't get called to do... So you're just all work? So it's all work. And it's a nice space to bring people. So if I'm doing my collaborations with artists and stuff, I'll bring them there. Yeah. And then the home one, obviously, you're at home. It's more convenient. Yeah. So if I come up with something, I'm not having to drive all the way to acting to kind yeah, of yeah, produce yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I can do it at home. How did a lockdown sort of affect you in that regard? It didn't. Yeah, I'll be thinking because you obviously have the home studio. Yeah, so yeah. Home, so. it was just business as usual. And um, everyone was kind of on at us anyway. Um, the producers, the DJs, they were all at home needing top lines. So we had work. It wasn't a problem for us. Mm-hmm. And the adverts still... Still running. Running. Yeah, they still need to sell to the people that are at home. So yeah, yeah, of course. It was perfect for us. In creating, uh, in, cre- in creating your group, uh, how did the production process change? Because I feel like when you're doing things by yourself, the creative process just, is just very like straightforward. Yeah. But then when you're mm. part of a group, there's almost like a collaborative effort to sort of make one thing. So how was, how, what was it like? What was the communication process like between you and the rest of the group when it came to producing tracks? Um, and that's the thing, actually, because sometimes we can all bring something different. Exactly, yeah. And then it's kind of, when you're on your own... It's you, just you, yeah. yeah. you just arguing with yourself. Mm-hmm. But when you're trying to please three minds and everyone's trying to... Or sorry, two minds. Um, and everyone's trying to um, give their... Like their creative input and everything. And, their creative, and you don't want to stifle anyone. But, uh, yeah, you just compromise. That's the only thing that's different. I think we all, we both want to just do well and do it to a good standard so that's that's the common goal Mm. so the only difference is yeah just the opinions and just knowing like i don't know the the flow of that it's sort of like the balancing act of like 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 you said you don't want to stifle anyone's creativity but at the same time you want to make sure that your creative input is like fully in there yeah and that everyone's happy and it sounds good Mm -hmm. Mm. do you know what i mean you're not compromising 
you, the sound too much. Yeah. And because we've been focusing, the thing with songwriting is when we get a brief, uh, it's very tailored to what the artist wants. So we can, it's a collaborative process. Um, production is something that we are finally getting our foot into more. So we've been more focused on top lining before. So the production is still something that we're kind of like dealing with. For me, I can just get on it and blah, blah, blah. But working together, it's like, yeah, I'm not taking over. So in terms of when you're creating your music, how do you create something that's trendy or good for the moment, but also got a timeless feel? I think you just got to be true to yourself. I'm not trying to follow any trends, if I'm honest with you. When I look at artists like, I don't know, Michael Jackson, let's go back. Timeless. He's just done what he wanted to do. He had something to say and he just said it. And he just had the team to, to put it together. And so I'm not trying to be the next anything. I'm just trying to be myself and that's already working. So I wouldn't change. I wouldn't try to lock my head too much to try and fit into a box that's already there. Kind of thing. I don't just be true mm. to to that. But maybe I didn't explain properly because there are two sides to the Melody Men. Mm. There are Melody Men that do the produ their own productions, yes. which is our own thing. This yeah. is the sound we want to create. Yeah. And then there's the Melody Men that works to a brief. So we work with labels, we work with artists. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, you know, Missy would write a song for, or Timberland would write a song for Justin Timberlake. Yeah. Or whatever. But then they'll release their own album with their yeah, own style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's kind of what we are. Is so that, yes, there's a side of the... Yeah. Is that linked to like the sound vocality and sound ambition? So sound, sound vocality is my vocal packs. Okay. Yeah. So sampling has become a big thing in music right really? now. Yes. Yeah, very big. So I've created my own vocal pack. Because I originally I started as a singer before I went into production. Mm -hmm. So I... Sound vocality is a vocal pack, so I've vocal packs for producers to use to vocal. So that's like vocals. presets and all that stuff. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so they drop you drop it in audio, whatever door they would use, yeah. and yeah, so that's separate. That's my own company, but the Melody Men we have a vocal pack as well on Loop Masters, okay, cool. uh, which is like a splice, same thing. Yeah. It's kind mm. of like, Obviously, with Melody Men, like you said, there's two parts. There's the artist side, and then there's sort of uh, I guess the like production and like outsourcing of productions. Yeah, yeah. So I find like this interesting thing in music where like in the last couple of years, the conversation between who contributes more to what makes a track attract the artist or the producer. So I was going to ask like, in your opinion, mm -hmm. as someone who like dabbles in both, what would your opinion on that be? I think if you're working with an artist, they always, they're at the front. Mm. They always have to be true to what they're, they're what they're trying to say. Yeah. So I would help in that process. I wouldn't mm. try it. There's no point me trying to say what I want to say. I'm not, because you want them to believe in the product as well. And if mm. they don't believe in it, then they don't sell it. Then the audience are going right. to not mm. feel it. You know, it's like a knock on effect from that. What is the process of, say, um, you want to like write for someone, let's throw someone out there like Beyonce or something. What's mm. like the process of being like, I'm gonna write a song for Beyonce. This is how I feel a song like hers would go. Like, how? What's the process in that? Before you start, if you ever do, I want ten percent. Uh, mm. I want ten percent. <laughs> See I how I set you up. Yeah, and you like, done that? Like, come like, on. Like, get paid. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean the thing is, and this is the tricky part because we have done this before, where we were like, yeah, this song is for like Rihanna. She's gonna, she's gonna love it. And then the next album, Rihanna's changed. The sound, the sound, yeah. And what have you got to do with a song just sitting there? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, that's yeah. old Rihanna. So, I would only attempt to write for an artist in that regard if I know they're looking for songs, okay. and if I have a background of what they're looking for, because I don't mm. want to waste my time. Mm. Of course, either, of course. unless I put it out myself as another, as a melody men thing, maybe. Mm. Yeah. But for an artist, I'd always try to find that the link. To get, so that they get to hear, because a lot of times we've submitted it and the artist hasn't even heard it. It's just the manager and the manager said no. Mm. Oh, wow. Okay. So there's a That's whole link that people don't realise, you know, that it's just industry. That's that it, cause, gets lost. Because you hear stories about like people who like hit songs, which were like originally intended for other artists. And it's like, 
feel like that's part of why the songs never reach them. Mm. The manager hears it and is like, totally. this isn't my artist. But then it's like, no, I really wanted to be on that song. Why, mm. didn't, you, why didn't you let me listen to it? And that's totally. such an interesting part of it, I feel. Yeah, wow. totally. Were there any sort of uh, producers that you sort of looked, or even just singers and artists that you sort of looked up to as you were kind of coming up? I really used to love, like, I never really grew up in church. Mm. We weren't really churchy like that, but... Um, I did like, uh, there was a gospel, when I did start to kind of go to church or kind of get into it, mm. there was one, I used to get like these things at night that would kind of like freeze, like could, night, they're called like night terrors apparently. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, I used yeah. to get them a lot and then someone gave me this CD at the time from a lady called Kim Burrell. Really and she, it, yeah. her voice is just amazing and she's just got this really amazing tone she's yeah. a gospel singer um and she kind of reminds me of faith evans yeah i know faith evans. Evans. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that kind of husky deep but then goes really high yeah. and i just i just always used to love that mm. her voice and i still do and um producer wise like for me I like bangers. Mm. Like I, I like the slow music and all of that stuff, but mwah, the bangers are the one. Yeah, of course. So like <laughs> that, course. they get me every time. So I loved like Timberland's 808s, the yeah. way he just drops them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a guy called Kay Trinada that I love. Oh, I love Kay Trinada. So yeah, banging. Quality, quality. Vince Stables. Yes. Like um, yeah, just kind of the fusions of hip hop and dance. Like yeah. I love that kind of vibe. Um, so, and it changes. I've got like a Spotify account and you can follow different thing. And yes. so there's never just one. My playlist is all over the place. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I can't really say just one in particular. No, of course, of course. You can always kind of hear something in something. I love Oliver Heldens as well. Okay. Dance wise, I think he's really cool. And Calvin Harris. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah he's a vibe. Um, and then I really like Hillsong, like, right? because they're words. The, the things that they say, the stories that they tell are yes. quite interesting yeah, yeah, to me. Yeah. So, and they have a variety of producers. Yes, and singers they, do. And writers. they do. So, yeah, I really have one. That's cool. But I keep my ears open. To just hear different sounds and different yeah, of inspirations. Yeah. Oh, I respect that. It changes, but yeah, I do have a few up there. Like They're always just consistent bangers. I want to say first as well, congratulations on the one million streams. Oh, oh thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> thank you. For If It's Love. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, I, I do enjoy that. That's on the playlist. Oh. That's on, that's on my huge playlist. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I think I'd totally be chatting. Yeah, I'm yeah. Not, I'm not, I'm not going to Too many tracks. But it's, it's, a banging, <laughs> it's a banging song. Um, okay. When it comes to your own personal stuff, um, how do you sort of prioritise time in that regard? Because I know you said you like to do top line stuff and production stuff for other people. Do you ever get the feeling at points where you just want to kind of do some more yeah. personal projects? Like I started in like the hip hop, neo soul type of vibe. That's kind of where I kind of started as a singer. So, um, and I know so many musicians like, and so I started a project um, called The Focus View and they done lots of stuff with uh, a lot of UK artists, foreign beggars and a couple of other people that I can't think of um, and I would love to go back to that to so kind of maybe do a fusion of the dance stuff what I've been doing with the Melody Men and like that vibes, like fusion I don't know what it is yet but I haven't had the time to do it because you just got to prioritise what, you know, got to eat, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. True, that's when the balance so, comes yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get a bit hungry. So that's the only reason why I haven't been able to go fully, fully down that road yet. But yeah, I would love to. I haven't had the time. Is that a long term goal for you? Yeah. Um, well, I think I'm going to do music forever. Yeah. So yeah, I think I'll do it at some point. Is it going to be like part rap? Part mute, part singing. No, 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 I don't rap. Oh my God. I only rap for, for the briefs. I feel like she's got bars. <laughs> I was going to say. I'd be like, I'm going to say. No, 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 my raps are so dead. But I mean, like if, I, if I'm doing a brief yeah. and that's what they require, then I'll get into that role, no problem. 
So that we've done a song called, um, oh, we've done so many songs, but there's a song called Get Low with Tough Love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's like a dance, uh, rap vibes. Um, a very, very first song that we got released called Rhino. I was rapping on it. Um, Saying I am the mighty soldier. See, she got bars. 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 Okay. So, um, yeah. So I can invoke the spirit of rap. So <laughs> Require, so but me personally, I wouldn't sit call myself a rapper. No. What's one thing you would change about the music industry if you could? Because you've mentioned like frustrations and stuff. There wouldn't be one thing though. <laughs> be quite a few, to be fair. Um, <laughs> Just the way that women are viewed, I guess, from a woman's point of view. Yeah. Um, the way that women are viewed. Yeah. You know, that we have to be these Barbie dolls, a certain image mm. to represent music. And, you know, I want to come against that. In a certain way, I'm, that's not my campaign, because I'm just going to mm. be who I'm going to be. And yeah, I'm, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, I'm walking, yeah. talking, breathing, you know, of, yeah. of, of representation of that. Mm. And also how black women are perceived as well, because um, I can walk into a room and people will just instantly think one genre of music mm. and not realize that I do like rock music to a degree. <laughs> um, I do like, I have a, 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 such an eclectic bag yeah. of talent and understanding for music, yeah. not to be judged by just the way, yeah. um, from their own perceptions. You know, so having more women like me in the industry will hopefully break down that, that whole thing. Oh, the barriers and the perceptions and the stereotypes. And yeah. Broken, yeah, yeah, 100%, because it's so boring. I can imagine. And can imagine. I've been, in, I've been in, 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 in rooms where it's just like, I've literally just, it's just been so hard to not want to scream the amount of racism, sexism, that is just standard. Like they just say it. And, oh, wow. and to, to me, I'm like, how can you say that in a world that preaches diversity and blah, 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 yeah. to be in those boardrooms where they're making decisions and hear people like that just openly, freely talk about it because that's been allowed is so I can, yeah, destructive I, I can, because it filters yeah. down to mainstream and what well, they would because of... they're making the decisions, so they're yeah. making the choices, and obviously it's going to filter down to everything later on. Yeah. And, you know, that's, 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 that's a journey that we're on. I don't know when it ends or when we finally get to the point where we're in a much better space, but I hope it's sooner rather than later. Yeah, I think it, the only way it's going to change is when, um, yeah, more women in the industry are making decisions. Yes. Yeah, and yeah, 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 that's the only way anything ever changes is mm. when we just set another standard where it's, you know, not so. I mean, that, that world will always be there. Those establishments have been there for ages. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think people are looking at new ways. And there's lots of different um, companies and charities and organisations that I've seen now of being a woman in music. Mm. There's She Writes, there's Girls I Rate. Um, uh, yeah, loads. Um, I can't think of, of so many, but they're all women in music, women in this, women in that, even the hashtags, female empowerment. So there's definitely change happening. What advice would you have for... Um, I think the sort of got asked a question when I was like prepping the interview, or we prepping the interview, about asking in terms of the advice you'd give to like mums who want to kind of step into where any career path. Mm. How would you, what would you sort of advise them so, so anyone who sort of feel like their life's on pause? Do you know what? It's so hard if you don't have the support. Mm. Because with all the visions in the world, you, it's hard when you don't have like the babies. Because there's different types of mums. There's the one that have the support and ones that don't. Mm. And, um, you know, being a single mum, it's, it's hard work because... Mm everything falls on you you know you've got to look after the child and then look after yourself and then try and follow your dreams like you've got to prioritize mm. you know your energy levels are just zilch so it's hard i think for me in the beginning stages just small steps just making contacts with people that can like which is why it was 
beautiful and such a blessing for me to be in the Melody Men because it was a group mm -hmm. thing. I wasn't doing it on my own. Um, and then establishing the support that I did have yeah. and just um, keep building on that. Try to be, you know, quite timetable with it. Mm. with it like so on a Friday can you look after him or next week blah 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 just mm. try and you know time slot it um but as he's getting older it gets easier because he's more independent yeah and it's not so I don't have to you know I like can use the toilet I can wash you know <laughs> little things that are just such yeah. a big such a big thing impact on my life because yeah, it's like yeah. finally yeah, I can yeah, just yeah, go yeah, yeah. I can be have got 30 minutes to myself to plan yeah. and think um, which was such a challenge in the beginning stages when he's a baby. Mm. So just bit by bit, don't be too hard on yourself. Mm. Like it's okay to put on a bit of weight, like quarantine time. I hey, put on look, like so much weight, out, you know. <laughs> and yeah. just learn to 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 like try to be good to yourself. Yes. Because we can, you know, I see on Instagram so much mantras. It, you know, what you do consistently is who you become. And there's all these sometimes. mantras that can, if you're in a situation, make you feel like I'm not doing enough. Yeah. Oh, I'm not serious then if yeah. I can't do this or I'm not. So kind of taking it with a pinch of salt because a lot of them are done by people that don't have kids. Do you know what I mean? And they can just focus on that. Let's be real. Yeah. But when you do, it's a different world yeah. for, 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 for your parents. Mm -hmm than it is for people that don't have kids yes. and just adjust yourself with people that are in that world look at how they have done things you know get encouraged because mm. being on your own and in your own head parent or no parent to be fair yeah. getting stuck in your own head you know can really have a massive impact on your mental well-being your mental health is so important to just yeah. look after you and just learn when to say no yeah. learn when to accept help there's no kind of rule book. It's you just got to know yourself yeah. and your your um, yeah your constraints. What, what what goes against what you can and can't do. And once you kind of have that, just like I said, five minutes a day, just trying to get in, so into your dream. Yeah. Whether it's read a book, yeah. whether it's I don't know, go for a walk. Yeah. It's just yeah, I don't know. <laughs> don't have a clear answer for that, but just. For, I can only say what works for me. Like yeah. I said, it's just understanding my, what I, not just looking at what I didn't have, mm. looking what I did have. Okay, I've got five minutes to do this mm. a day. I can do that. Looking at my support, who can help and just write off those who can't. And yeah, just learning to not be too hard on myself. <laughs> Well, thank you for playing all time own for us. You know, uh, great banger, great banger on the guitar. It's been a year, guys. It's been a year. Classic. Leave it alone. Let little Lars Nas live forever. Little Lars, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's been a long year, fam. It's been a long year. Oh, little wow. Nas X, man, legend out there, fam. If you say so. Fair man, enough. Even okay. Nas collaborated with him. <laughs> anyway, we don't speak about that, but fair enough. Continue. Don't disrespect the guy. Please continue. Anyway.